much, y'all. The serger has arrived for my wife's. Yeah, she's pumped. We're gonna go ahead and get it inside and uh, assemble it. Yes, there it is. All the way back there, waiting to come into the house. It's not bad. Just gotta turn it on its feet. You look pretty excited. I am. Yeah, what do we have, Ira? So this is the table that comes fully assembled. This is the motor down here, servo right? Servo motor. What's it called? Servo motor. The servo motor is pre-attached onto the table. And then this is the motor head. So we'll take all this inside and then we'll pull the motor head out and drop it in and attach the belt. I got an upgraded table that puts casters on a stainless steel frame. Of course you did. <laughs> so you got casters with locks on this one? Yeah, and then we have to install the, uh, there's a spool thread holder and then the light as well. We're, We're gonna take it inside, then unbox it. Yeah. So we'll just take these three main pieces. All right, let's do it. It looks like they include the tools that you need. Just in case, I did not see, but the oil bottle is right here in the styrofoam. The instruction manual has the installation directions. Right here, right here. Yeah, that would make sense. Holy smokes. Oh man, we got juked. The top piece here, the serger itself, I'd say at least 40 to 50 pounds, if not heavier. Just be aware of that, be careful. I just want to show you guys exactly how much it weighs so you know what you're dealing with when you if you order one or when you order one you can know exactly what to expect the table itself is definitely lighter I'm gonna put that up here so let's see how much it weighs and see if I'm strong enough yeah so it's definitely not 70 pounds there you go 52 pounds four ounces that is a heavy piece of equipment yeah for how small it is it's very dense and we have to place the motor head in and this is what we're gonna attach the chain to yeah, in. I was wondering where this piece was right here. Yeah. But now I see it. That lifts and releases the presser foot. Okay. <laughs> All right, so for step one here, it's saying to put this plastic tray in place and this other piece underneath and then the four rubber stoppers, which they already installed that for us. So that's a, we really appreciate that. Thanks, Juki. Yeah, we just need the rubber stoppers. And these four rubber stoppers are going to go right here on these four pins. So here we go. So do it with the tape, as you guys can see, it tapers down at one point, bigger base. So the bigger part goes on top. Just push them on, they're not too difficult at all. Let's go on to the next step. All right, so the next step it says is you gotta take off this styrofoam, or not styrofoam, plastic ceramic stuff so you can open it up. You can see that the door folds all the way over. So next we're gonna yeah, install this. We've already this. installed this piece, but we gotta install this and this. And then we're just gonna install these two pieces here. Scoot it down a little more because you're missing the teeth. There you go. There you go, it looks solid. Oh yeah, you pull it forward. Okay. okay. So one washer, if you want one washer on top of the table, two underneath with the nut. Yeah, just two. I'm assuming one's a lock washer. It's always good to have a lock washer in there. And we're gonna go ahead and put it in place. And if it's not gonna be used anywhere else, that's where we'll leave it. Yes, yeah, so you do one above the table here. Drop it down. And then you put, put the uh, flat washer first up against the bottom of the table. And then the lock washer underneath that. And then the nut's gonna tighten down. And this is what this lock washer does. It just prevents it from being able to be unscrewed easily. Let's move it out. So you just kind of hand tighten it and it's it's gonna start to bite down on that lock washer. So that's the best I can do with my hand there. Okay, make sure you get a adjustable pliers to get this nut tightened pretty well. So you can just hold on to the pole, make sure it's tightened down. And then once it reaches a certain point, and that's very sturdy there. That's good enough for me and I hope it's good enough for Ivan. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna install the thread brackets now onto the pole, post here. And as far as I can tell, it looks like they sit, yeah, with the corner facing the front of the table. 
All right, just like that. Okay guys, so we're gonna have four of these brackets and four of these nuts and bolts with lock washers to hold those brackets in place. But basically this guy, I don't know if you can show, but there's, see there's a slot here on each of these bars and that's what this tooth goes into, just like that. And you spin it around and then this bolt's gonna go through the front of the arm bracket there, just right through there. And then it's gonna come out the back. I did it with the lock washer. The lock washer goes on this side, but yeah, just put the nut or the bolt through. Just like that, comes out the back, put the lock washer on, and then you got your nut. And this is what tightens it down and keeps them in place. So just do that with all four of them. Show the other ones the so you can. So you put this right through here. It's got a slot in the bar there. And it comes through and just wrap it around. And then you just get a nut and bolt and lock washer. You got that in place right there. Push the bolt through. And then we got the lock washer first. Okay, or just I just needed a better angle. Okay, so there you go. So we got two of those brackets holding the arms. And again, once you put them at the height you want, just tighten it down really tight and those guys will stay in place. All right, so all the little uh, cone-shaped thread holders, right? They come stacked together like this. You just gotta slide them off. She does have four all together here. So we'll get these in place and go from there. All right, so for the spool holders, you get the one bar here. You put this down first, slide that down. Then you put this um, felt. fabric felt, right? Just mm -hmm. like that. And then this guy comes on top. And then you put the, this part, of course, through the bracket and securely fasten it down. So just do all four of them like this or three or however many you bought. Okay, all four done. Now let's go ahead and mount them onto the brackets. Okay, something I wanted to point out to you guys is these holes at the top of the bracket are somewhat of an oval shape. Make sure the, the bar or the rod here fits in that oval shape. So it's cut out to, as you can see, I can't spin it because it fits right into the oval shape there. Let's see if this one can show you here. So see, it fits in exactly in that shape. You don't want to have it the long way where, see, it doesn't go down. You see the gap? So you spin it where it goes all the way down and meets the bracket. Make sure you do that and don't overlook it. Okay, so for us at this time, we're just gonna take all the plastic off. If we put the motor on and whatnot, we don't want to cover some of the plastic edges and have an issue with it later. So we're just gonna take everything off. All right, so now to get the extension bar on, you use this bracket here that's already got the bolts and nuts in place, but you wanna get the two arms that you're gonna put above the joining portion. You wanna put these on first. So just slide this on. All right, and slide the other one on, just like that. And they say to keep it at least two inches below the rubber cap there. So anyway, you can adjust that as you put it together. But then you put this guy here in place, put that down and slide the top on. And these guys will stay there and just tighten the two uh, nuts and bolts here. 516 socket and a 10 millimeter socket to get these bolts tightened down, at least to help you get it down a little faster. Just tighten it down. Yeah. That's nice and secure. And then for these, uh, these arms here, it's bigger nuts and bolts. So just change it out to the 10 millimeter socket. Move it a little bit. We got the arms in place. Okay, well I guess we'll go on to the next step. Okay, y'all remember these four uh, rubber feet we put in here? They fit exactly into the base of the head uh, of the machine. So when you get ready to put it in place, just line them up and it, they just fall right into place. They're exactly lined up. So it makes it easy with something this heavy. Just kind of falls in place here and it's nice and secure. Okay. Next step. Okay, so now our next step, since we put in the head, now we're gonna attach this smaller pedal. That's for our presser foot. So we showed you the bracket on the back and we're gonna attach this chain to the metal foot. Okay, and just, just so you guys see here, the bigger pedal was already pre-assembled for us. So I don't know how many, you know, the different models or whatever you get may not come assembled, but the, ours did, or Iris did. I'm not touching this thing. <laughs> Except for right, now. Now. <laughs> for right now, exactly. So this is the chain with the S hook that we're gonna kind of get everything in place. So let's go ahead and do that, right? Yep. So yeah. there's a small part of the S on the chain. 
Okay, so back here. So just hook that. I'm, I'm gonna hook it on the. I guess it comes right through here. Yeah, because that's where the pedal is. Okay. And then we hook it on the last hole. What do you think? Yeah, that's what it looks like. And it just hooks this way, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, don't I would think imagine. It'll scratch or anything. Yeah. Okay. So you hook the, the the top portion right up there, and it falls straight down into the black solid cast iron metal. So here we're just threading the the chain through the middle top hole here. So we looped it through the grate. There's a hole on the pedal, but just ignore that in the back. Yeah, back here. Uh, back here, there's a hole, just ignore that. So we looped it through the grate, looped the chain, and then the chain pulls on the slack, and then it hangs on your main area. That way we can depress our foot, if that makes any sense whatsoever. There you go, just like that. And it's not a whole lot of motion, just whatever the max is for your presser foot. Okay, and we just match the angle of our other pedal. All right, here we go. So now if we come over here and we press it, it'll lift our precious foot for us. Okay. All right, so now the way to get the belt on, to get the belt on is you gotta lift it, tilt it downward so this the actual wheel goes down a little bit, just enough to get the belt on. So here we go. Just grab it from here, lift it up, tilt it down, and it should give us enough, a little bit more. It's getting close. Just kind of bring it, there we go, all right. And then just tilt it back down, and that 10 millimeter tension, whatever they were saying is, yeah, that feels be, right. You should be able to push your belt. It shouldn't be too tight. But yeah, they say also something as a safety feature, make sure if you ever do spin it by hand, make sure it's clockwise and not counterclockwise. Okay, so now that we have the belt in place, we can put this cover on, and it's just three flathead screws right here. I don't know if you want to show them, Myra, but you got one, two and three down there to match up with these guys right here so you just kind of line it up here and this plastic goes over the belt but basically it wouldn't go in place if you don't have the holes properly lined up right there you can see that it's nice and parallel or just has a proper gap all the way around so that's that's where it needs to be and we'll just put these screws back in and this will be good to go Okay, so we, we got the cap on here, or the cover, over the, uh, the belt, the driving belt. But they included this screwdriver as well as a shorter one. And this one worked fine with the first two screws. But this last back screw hole here, you can get the screwdriver in place, but it's just too deep in an uh, angle for me to, it was, I couldn't screw it in basically. So we got a really small flat screwdriver. You couldn't have gone under the and table? That, no, I couldn't have, I already tried. So a smaller screwdriver here to get it into the hole and where you can get it level and we were able to tighten it down. So just keep that in mind to have a shorter screwdriver in order to be prepared for that one. Okay, so we forgot if you want to show them there. The needle, needle bar? I don't know what that is. Well, we forgot those metal bars basically to put them on, right? To install them? Yeah. Okay, so you're going to have these two plastic uh, rectangular pieces that are going to hold these two uh, metal stainless steel bars in place. So in order to do that, we had to loosen this back up just so we can get that plastic rectangle in place. And you just slide it up there. And then the rest will just attach as needed from there. So we just had to make sure we had to get this on. And then we can retighten that and then get those bars in place. So don't make the same mistake. You do that as you're doing this build here like we did prior in the video. Just so y'all know, we paid like an extra $100 to have the uh, built table freight shipped to us. Uh, I think it's completely worth it just seeing how long the simple stuff is taking. Yeah. The table would have been a headache, especially when you have obscure directions. That would have been terrible. Right, it's what, three pages long for all this stuff? Yeah. And some is before some steps, then after, like we just did with this. It's at the beginning, but you don't, we didn't catch it till. Yeah, it doesn't off. actually show it in there. Yeah. Okay, so this bar. Point it down. Just point it down like that, right? Mm -hmm. So this bar goes like this. It's pretty snug. You can loosen this up. It's got Phillips and bolts there. Phillips screw with bolts, but. It's pretty snug, you just kind of slide it in there. And then you attach the smaller rectangle piece to it, like that. And then that piece goes 
like a straw this way. Yeah, there you go. Okay, slide that in, and I'm assuming it's gonna sit right there at the corner. But that's how you install that. I'm just gonna tighten them down, and you don't need a you don't need pliers or anything because it's it's just the shape of basically has the hex cut out for the bolts. So that's how these guys cut. I mean, you can adjust it how you want when you set up your your thread and everything, right? Yeah. But you have the I'm bigger... assuming the thread comes, like the spool comes here, and then you thread it through here, and then it's going to come through here to your machine. Oh, I'm assuming sense. that's so what it is. it's got a nice angle to it. Yeah. Okay. But that's that. The bigger uh, rectangular plastic bracket on the post, and then the smaller one to hold the two metal bars together. Tighten them down with hand tight and it's nice and secure. Here's the uh, oil cap, right? Just it's got an arrow there. It even says oil right on it. So just take it off. But they provide plenty, plenty of oil. Okay, and we got the funnel, and I'm gonna go ahead and start pouring it in, and I already just tell me when it's done, right? Okay. It's kind of scary. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, it's probably gonna need the whole thing. That's why they give you that much. And so between the two marks? Yes. And just right there, stop. <laughs> that was scary. <laughs> so it takes 90% of what's in there, 80 to 90% of what's in there. All right, so now we got the oil where it needs to be. We're just gonna put the cap back on. Just like that. Okay, what do we have to oil? The needle bar and the upper looper guide have to be lubricated. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So. The needle bar. Okay, so that's the needle bar to so just oil that, lubricate it. And then the lower looper guide. Yeah. There we go, right there, that bar right there. You can see the, the tip of the needle oiler there. Just to make sure those are oiled before you start sewing for the first time. Right there, that bar. Right there. Yeah, that bar right there. And. And this bar, the needle bar back there. So make sure you get those oiled. Oh, so this one's full. It says to add silicone oil. This one's very obviously empty. So on the machine. So this yeah. one here is full. Right there. Here and here's a little spout that you're supposed to use to fill it. That's okay. Right. And then this one you can obviously see it's empty. And that also has a little hole right there at the yeah, top. And a little, little wick here soaks it up and wets your needles so they don't the threads sorry your needle threads is what i meant to say so our light it's just a magnet oh my god it's strong it's a magnetic uh, led light right yeah and any any metal spot you just put it there and you're good to go plate cover opens opens with a latch here and you can open and access oh, some wow. features on the side just another few thousand pieces okay parts <laughs> So that opens up just like that with this latch here. Oh, yes. And then this opens here. You just slide it to the side like a normal sewing machine. And then you can thread everything. It looks so much like tinier. Looks like Spider-Man's webs. Okay. And then this one, for easier threading, you push this down and your whole entire foot slides out. Oh boy, look at that. And then you can get in here and thread your needles really well and put your needles in, which... If you own a normal sewing machine, that's extremely helpful. Just just there. Slide it back, push it down, and pop it back into place. Awesome. Okay, so we just got our call from the dealer, and um, they got an email from Civit, and they let us know that they let us know that we actually have to shift this whole bottom in order to line up our machine. Um, so he's just loosening these bolts down here. So we're just gonna loosen it in a, enough so that we can just kind of easily slide it around. So four, there's one, two, corners, three, four, basically. five. Oh, there's five. five of them that we have to loosen. Yeah, yeah there's one five. back here. You see this one back here? That one's the uh, first one. Okay. So we have to loosen all five so we can shift the whole thing together. And that's gonna shift the motor um, and the whole machine itself over so nothing gets kind of out of whack. It's still all connected pretty well. There we go. Okay. So all the way there and then you sit back? Mm hmm All the way back? Or Probably. just see how it... That's all the way back to... Yeah, that's okay. it. Let's see. Slight. Oh, that's bad of a deal. 
It's now, okay, tight. Now fine tune it. How does that look to you? You it want to slide beautiful. it that way a little bit more if I can? Or I think that's it. That's huh? good, yeah, because I don't want it to it's scrape. Hit these Make corners. sure it opens mama, mama. without scraping the. Yeah. I want you to come feel it when you get a chance there. Yeah, that's perfect. Right here is good? Yep. Okay. Yeah, so now we have it. He's he's dropping it by loosening this bolt so the whole plate drops just a little bit. All you have to do is loosen the bottom ones first and then bring the top one all the way down to lock it into place. Should we get a level or it's fine? Yeah, I would. Yeah, so see once we raise this up, it'll be perfectly level. The bubble is in between the lines. Are you, just come feel it and tell me if you're happy with it or not. Yeah, that's, it's actually perfect. All right, so that's how you do it, you guys. Exactly how you want it. We're done. Yay. All right, you also just, uh, so if you want to clean off that residue that from the uh, plastic covering, just use some adhesive remover, whether it's goof off or I think this is from Harbor Freight, but just some adhesive remover and it'll take that off. Okay, so now it's completely done. She's got uh, all of her threading through the different areas that they need to be. Of course, I'm not going to know the terminology, but everything's here. It's ready to go. It's all set up. And we got this. So the cutout was fine. We just had to adjust everything. We showed you guys how to do that. And everything looks good, feels good. She feels great. She made some promises to me. So that's pretty cool. But that is one good looking commercial machine. Okay, and then we're gonna so show you guys where to, how to put the oil in this location here, right here at the front, which I guess for the thread, it keeps the thread oiled so it doesn't heat up, you said, or? That's what it says. Yeah. Okay. Okay, we'll show you guys how to fill that up. Okay, so we're gonna put the rest of our oil. Uh, I called the dealer, they said it's the same oil that you use for oiling your machine that goes inside of the machine as well. Um, so it's a non-staining silicone-based oil. Um, so I'm just gonna use my little funnel again and put it into this little bottle so I can use it easier. Oh, and I put too much. So I got these off of Amazon. We'll put a link if you wanna know where these are. But it just screws on like a little needle tip and it just screws onto our bottle. I'm trying not to spill it, so. Yeah, I'm just gonna fill it up to the top. Okay, so here it goes. So these little bottles are cool because they don't drip until you push it. Which is oh, like nice. nice, yeah. There it goes. So I'm just gonna get to That's the pretty cool, yeah. Because our other one was full. Okay, so that oil is what? Yeah, it's, um, keeps the thread from breaking, I'm assuming, from the friction. Oh, nice. Okay, that makes sense, yeah. actually. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it just keeps it lubricated here so it can slow it down, or lubricate it a little. And then the same oil you can use for the oiling spots that we did earlier. I already had machine oil on, my, on hand because I have a lot of machines. So again, we just oiled here with the same oil. So that's like the main rod or what that pushes Yeah, anything that has like metal on metal, you want to make sure it's oiled. Um, so for this machine, it's the needle rod. And then it was down here for the, the upper looper. And you just put a little oil there and uh, up here. Okay. Okay, we got everything oiled up. And the needle there is still good to go. It's right under the green. So it's between the red and green. That's where things need to be. So it does have a drawer that comes with the... The setup, so that is included.